ஓம் சாந்தி In India, we celebrate New Year for first five days, minimum. And today is only the third day, I think so. So, a Happy New Year in advance. So, so now, at least it, it is already part of us. Happy New Year is 2010. I received a phone call from Sister Meera. that i should come here and meet you all i told her that i am not that capable enough to take a class of these double foreigners they are all intellectuals they are all very well experienced and all those things but in spite of that she insisted so i said okay i can come there i hope i will be able to make some contribution then i asked her about my topic then she suggested me that based on today's avyakta murli you know today is sunday that you see the use of divine intellect i said okay but at the same time she gave me permission also to have my own subject also but i said okay i will convert slightly in a different manner this topic use of divine intellect in godly services because in the world also there are people who are intelligent and i don't know you know sanskrit in sanskrit you see those who are intelligent people they are known as shaksharaha shakshar means intelligent people unfortunately you don't know sanskrit otherwise it is a beautiful language and it connotes the something very special about this word shakshar shaksharaha viparitaha rakshasaha means if you reverse this word shaksharaha then when you reverse it it becomes rakshasa rakshasa means giants not in that regular sense but in you know in the other sense you see devils and all those things and it happens really in english language also intellectual giants they call it that means they have got intellect intelligence but but they are using it in different manner most of the problems that the modern world is facing is on account of use of intelligence in a negative manner but we in our this divine family use our this intelligence in godly services and let me tell you very honestly that once abhyakt baba also told me that Ramesh, your progress in this divine family is on account of your intelligence and use of intelligence in godly services. So, I like to use this godly intelligence in our godly services. And right from the beginning, I have used my intelligence in godly services. But in the beginning, it was not that godly intelligence it was merely intelligence but i have never used it in the negative manner the first one i give you example of my first use of my intelligence what happened that in 52 1952 my mother came into contact with this divine family and because of that we also came into contact with this divine family i had lost my father in 1950 and you know every year you see there is that we observe that ceremony yearly ceremony so when he died on 19th of september 1950 so in 1952 around 19th of september my mother decided to 
offer bhog for Baba. And she told me that you would like to come to visit Brahma Kumari's center because I am offering bhog to Sri Baba in remembrance of your father. So I said, okay, I don't mind. I will come there. And in those days, you see, bhog was offered not in the morning, but at 12 noon. Mind you, it is of 1952. So at 12 noon, when I reached there, you see, there was the arrangement made for bhog, offering bhog and all those things. You have seen how bhog is being offered. A sister goes into trance. So the sister went into trance. I was sitting in front of her. That was my first experiment with an experience of Brahma Kumaris and this trance and all those things. Suddenly she came back and said that the soul in whose memory this bhog is being offered, that soul has the habit of eating betel nuts and all those things. You see, it's a normal traditional habit that after eating or taking lunch or dinner, if you eat these betel nuts and all those things, then they are very useful for your digestion. Now, these sisters said they had never used these betel nuts and all those things. So they asked me, do you know what your father used to eat after meals? I said, yes, I know betel nuts and all those things. So she said that Baba wants that to be kept in a separate dish and come back again in the subtle region. So I said, okay, I will go and buy these betel nuts and all those things. So that was my first use of my intelligence of buying betel nuts. I came back, bhog was offered. But that was the starting point of inquisitiveness in my mind. That how this sister came to know that my father used to eat betel nuts and all those things. I asked my mother that why did you inform such a small habit of my father and complain to these sisters? It's a good habit, it's not a bad habit. My father was not smoking or not drinking or not gambling or anything. And it was just a simple habit of eating betel nuts and all those things. And why did you inform these sisters about my father's habit. So my mother said that she has not informed his sisters about my father's habit. That started my mind ro huh, rolling on the subject. That how this sister came to know that my father had that habit of eating betel nuts. So I thought, let me conduct one examination or test of the sisters. I'm just telling you how I had my first views of intelligence in that negative, not, not absolutely negative, but in a negative manner. So I told my mother that, can you invite this sister who went into trance and who in trance met my father, can we invite her to our residence on this Sunday? So, she said, okay. Then I thought, let me conduct one examination of this sister. Use the use of intelligence in that negative manner. I have, my hobby was to have uh, photographs also. I was a very good professional photographer also. I had a collection of more than 3,000, 4,000 photographs. If you go to history hall, you will see that one-third or one-fourth of the photographs are either taken by me or by my cousin-brother, lucky cousin-brother. 
So I thought, let me conduct this test, because this is, the sister said that she met my father in the subtle region. I said, how it is possible? So when I invited her to my residence, I removed photograph of my, my father from the walls of my home. I removed all the other photographs of my father from my collection of more than 3,000, 4,000 photographs and kept only one photograph of my father in that collection of more than 3,000, 4,000 photographs. And I wanted to see that the sister uh, has a look, she goes, uh, goes through these photographs also and whether she can identify photograph of my father, Lokik father. So when she came on Sunday, along with my mother, we had an initial discussion. Then I was thinking how to present my photographs to her, uh, for her vision and for her, uh, for, for, uh, for conducting my examination. But suddenly she asked me, what, is it, what are you doing? I said, I am studying in college. Then she asked me, what is your uh, hobby? Then I said, oh, she, she is coming nearer to my object. So I said, my hobby is photography. And then she to ask me, can I have a look at your photographs? I said, oh, it's a godsend gift to me that she will be examining and, and um, all my 3,000, 4,000 photographs. Let me see whether she can identify photograph of my father. I said, I told her, yes, I got my suitcase ready with all those photographs. So I brought that suitcase and placed it in front of her. She started going through all those photographs, one by one. And suddenly when she came across the photograph of my father, she took it out and said, is this the photograph of your father? I said, yes. How did you know? Because she had come for the first time to my residence and she had no knowledge about my family, lucky family and all those things. So she had not seen my photograph of my father or anybody else in my family. And that was her first visit to my residence. But the moment she identified, that was the starting point of my understanding that this institution has got certain divine powers and they are blessed with certain divine visions. And because of that, they are in a position to do godly service. So this is how, that was the first beginning of my use of my intelligence in this godly service, to identify uh, this intelligence or the use, utility and usefulness of the, uh, the trans visions and all those things. The second example of my use of this divine vision was in 57, 1957. My mother thought that we should invite Brahma Baba and Mamma to Bombay, because Brahma Baba normally used to visit Bombay during winter, because you know that Mount Abu winter is severe. So my mother asked me, can I invite Brahma Baba and Mamma Mateshwari? I said, okay, certainly you can invite. So she asked me, do you understand the meaning of word invitation? I said, yes, certainly I know it. It means that all the expenses from Mount Abu to Bombay and return up to Mount Abu should be borne by us. So she said, can we do it? I said, why not? We can do it. So invitation was written to Baba by my mother that please visit Bombay at our invitation. Baba refused to accept invitation and said that he will not come at the invitation of the mother, but he will come at the invitation of the child 
that means Ramesh. So my mother asked me, my Baba was also using his intelligence against me or towards me, and I was also using my intelligence. It was a conflict of intelligence of Sri Baba and myself. So Baba wrote to me that if the child invites me, I will come. I said, okay. So we drafted invitation and Baba sent telegram that book accommodation for four months for Baba and Mama. They will come here and stay for four months. So then we started search for suitable accommodation from Brahma Baba and Mamma also. We got it. And when we were about to sign the contract, Dadi Puspa Santa, she was in charge of our centers at that time in Bombay. She said that the agreement should be for four months. I said, no, agreement should be for four and a half months. You look, there is the first conflict of intelligence. She said, nothing doing. Baba has said that he will stay here for four months only and I cannot go beyond the direction of Brahma Baba. So I told her that it's all right, let him stay for four months and then we will utilize balance, for, balance of the period for other services also. Mind you, I was not a, a Rajyogi soul, I was just a cooperative soul. So I insisted that agreement should be for four and a half months. And she wrote to Baba that Baba Ramesh has booked it for four and a half months, although I told him that agreement should be for four months, but he did not accept my advice and he has gone beyond it and he booked it for four and a half months. Baba said, okay. When he, Baba and Mama came down to Bombay, so I was driving the car, Baba was sitting next to me. At the back, my mother and Mama Mateshwari was sitting there. And Baba started this intellectual boxing with me. Baba said that, oh, you child, you see, you have got a lot of arrogance about your money and your wealth and intelligence. When I wrote, that you should book it for four months. Why did you book it for four and a half months? So like that, Baba told me all those things. You know, test from Baba. I tell you very honestly, uh, examinations or tests for uh, by Maya and all those things, they are still simple. But the examinations of Baba, they are very tough. And it's very difficult to face those examinations because the question comes of your, of, of your loyalty or of your obedience to Baba's direction and the question is whether it is Baba's direction or Baba's taste. That's a very difficult question, very subtle distinction is there between use of your intelligence at that particular moment to diagnose whether it is a taste or a direction. Anyway, you will understand these things when you also uh, use your intelligence and all those things for godly services. So Baba also started conducting my examination that he will go away at the end of four, four months only. He will not stay here for four, extra 15 days. Your money for 15 days will be waste and all those things. He started questioning me and my intelligence and my booking for extra 15 days. So I was just listening. I was driving calmly. I thought that this is an examination by Baba. So after, after a while, you see, Baba stopped talking. Then I said, Baba, have you conducted your examination? Have you raised all your questions? Can I now reply your questions? Baba said, yes, yes, you can reply. And then I started giving my explanation. I said, Baba, if you had if we had booked as per your direction this flat, we would have received possession of this flat 
today in morning at 6 o'clock and your train has come at 6.30, within half an hour we could not have arranged anything in that flat to receive you and for better accommodation of you, yours, uh, better hospitality of yours. So we, we have uh, booked in advance for four and a half months, and therefore we have taken possession uh, in advance by five days. In these five days, we have <coughs> colored this uh, whitewash, what do you call it, whitewash the entire flat. Baba said, why did you spend money on your whitewashing of the flat? I said, a great personality like yours is, is coming there. Flat might have been used by the earlier tenant for any other purpose, we don't know. But if we whitewashed and colored and all those things, then it will be uh, very useful and very good for you. Then I said, we have brought furniture, we got linoleum and all those things, cupboards and whatnot. Sisters have gone there. And the moment you reach there, your breakfast will be ready for you. Class will be ready, everything will be ready. This would not have been possible if we had booked only for four months. And then I told Baba, I gave Baba's knowledge to Baba. You know, because I was a cooperative soul. And I said, Baba, I know your knowledge. Your, as for your knowledge, <laughs> drama is more powerful than Sri <laughs> Baba. And it may happen that you may have to extend your stay beyond four months also. As for drama. And Baba said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to extend my stay beyond four months. So I calmly said, Baba, let us leave it to drama. Why we argue on that point now? This, is, this question will come up at the end of your fourth month. He said, okay. So that was the end of the examination. And then what happened? We used to, Dada Vishwakishore was bomb, in Bombay with us. And he used to take care of Baba's body also. He used to take Baba for all the medical examinations and tests and all those things. And just before the end of the fourth month, appointment was there of one doctor. And we took Baba for that appointment for the medical test and all those things, because in those days, medical facility here in Mount Abu was not that good. So that doctor said that, I want certain such blood test of Brahma Baba, and then let him come again with the blood report, and then he will prescribe medicines. We said, okay. That was on Saturday, and Baba was to leave Bombay on Monday, that was the end of the fourth, fourth month. On Sunday, my sister, she is a doctor, she came to meet Baba, she took this blood from Baba, and we went for medical, and we went to a lab, but that lab was closed on Sunday. They said, come on Monday only. We went there again on Monday with the blood, and when we gave that blood to that doctor uh, in that lab, they said that the medical report will come only after three days. It requires testing and nurturing and all those things of the blood, and that will take three days. We said, he has to go to Abu today only. He said, it's impossible. I cannot do anything. Blood test. And this examination takes three months, three days minimum. So we thought, let us go back to Baba. Whether we should wait for the medical report and then meet the doctor again. Or Baba has to go to Abu on the same day. That was Sunday, my Monday. And that was the last day of the fourth, four months stay. And then in my heart, I had a knowledge, a complete faith in me that Baba will have to stay, extend his stay in Bombay. But I could not express that thing because Dada Vishwakishwar was 
in charge of Baba. When we reach the place where Baba was staying, Dada Vishwakishore informed Baba, I was standing far away. I didn't want to interrupt the, uh, the talk, that talk between Baba and Dada Vishwakishore. I was just listening silently. And then Dada Vishwakishore said to Baba, we have brought back that blood sample because the doctor, uh, the lab people say that it will take minimum three days. When you want to go today, how can we do it? You will have to extend your stay here by four days because our report will come after three days. And then Baba started looking at me. <laughs> and then I was smiling, but I could not smile because after all, you say, how can I? I it, it will be, it will amount to disregard of Baba. So I was just standing silently. And then Baba said that, okay, I will extend my stay. So that was the struggle between the intelligence of two people, Brahma Baba and myself. And that ultimately as per drama, uh, Baba had to extend his stay. So then I interf interfered and I told Baba, that Baba, if you are going on Thursday, then why don't you extend your stay by further two days? and remain in Bombay on Saturday and Sunday and then go to Abu on next Monday. We have got still this flat for 10 days and you will be extending your stay by 7 days. So still we will have 3 more days. And then Dadi Puspasan and all of us said, yes, 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 Baba, you must extend it by one week. And then with the pressure from the Divine Family, Baba had to agree that yes, Baba and Mama will extend their stay by one week. And then Baba said, the child, what you th thought was correct. I said, it is not my view or my decision. It is as per drama. But that gave me strength that, you see, we have to use our intelligence in such a manner that it will be useful for godly services. But then thereafter, you see, uh, we came to Abu in 61 and then we decided to be Baba's children and then we thought that we should use it, use this children, uh, intelligence as per the directions of Baba or as per the directions of sisters. So that was in 61. And the very first question of use of intelligence came when we had the very first festival, Rakhi festival in Bombay. Dadi Nirmo Shanta was our center in charge. You know Dadi Nirmo Shanta, Brahma Baba's lucky daughter, she is uh, always meeting Baba at the end of Baba's uh, Murli. So Dadi Nirmo Shanta was in our center in charge. And then she told, we had a meeting and we decided to have a nice function. So Dadi Nima Shanta asked me, can, I, I asked Dadi Nima Shanta that, can we have a nice big function? So Dadi Nima Shanta told me, yes, we can have. Then she asked me, for how many people? You know, before this knowledge, you see, because I was secretary of a one very big educational institution, charitable institution, and we used to conduct big functions, big programs, and people used to come and visit and participate in our functions by paying uh, for the tickets also, 5,000, 10,000 people like that. So I had that experience. So I told Dadi Nirmo Shanta that why not organize it for at least two to three thousand people. And Dadi Nimo Shanta said, Ramesh, you don't have experience. Not even three people come to our lectures. And you think of two thousand people? Again, that conflict of intelligence came. So I told Dadi Nimo Shanta that, Dadi, that is what you have been doing. And because of your method, of inviting people, you cannot uh, 
You cannot have a crowd of more than three people. Give me chance and I will see that there will be a crowd of more than four, three to four thousand people. I know how to handle people and how to invite people. She so said, no, 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 don't think too much of your intelligence and experience. Not so many come. Ultimately, it, it, it was a compromise of <laughs> intelligence. Dadin Rimasanda agreed that we have a small hall of 350 people only. I said, okay. I had decided not to contest too much, uh, use so much of our, my intelligence uh, and be obedient child of Baba. So I said, okay, 350 is all right. But and then Dadin Rimasanda said, hardly there will be five people in the audience. I said, let us, let us leave it to drama. You allow me to have a program as per my uh, suggestions and my desire, my planning. I drafted invitation card, uh, dialogues, dance, and drama and all those things. And at the end wrote discourse. Because people wanted entertainment and through entertainment, knowledge, and all those things. That was my understanding of people's desire. And then I wrote my first drama, In Search of God. That was my first drama. I became the first Shakespeare of this divine knowledge, so to say. And it was nicely performed. Usha was the uh, main hero actress of this drama and uh, we had opened our gates at 3 o'clock, function was at 3.30 on a normal working day and within five minutes the whole entire hall was house full, jam-packed and then Dadi Nimo Shanta got the news that oh, hall is absolutely house full and there are more than 350 people, it's an air-conditioned hall. The authorities will not allow extra persons to enter into the hall. So we conducted the function. We wanted to, uh, Adin Emoshanta to come and give her discourse or lecture at the end. She refused, she said, I am sitting outside. Let Usha conduct my, my, her lecture also. So I was worried that what is this? Why Dadi Nirmashanta is not coming on the stage for giving lecture? But as I have decided that I have to use my intelligence as an obedient child of Baba, I said, okay, I asked Usha to give lecture also for 20 minutes. And then at the end of the function, I went outside and asked Dadi Nirmashanta, what is my fault? Why you did not come inside? And Dadi Nimbhanta said, what can I do? You invited so many people and only 350 could be admitted inside. There were outside the hall, there was a big crowd of at least 200 people. So I was sitting with them talking with them, chit-chatting them, and giving respect and regard to them, and sharing knowledge with them. Why did you invite so many people? I said, I already told you that there should be a big hall for 2,000 or 3,000 people, and you refused, and you said, okay, nothing doing, not more than 350. It is not my mistake. But that, she wrote to Baba, that, look, uh, Brahmesh conducted the program, 350 people, you see, they were already there within five minutes of opening of gates and all those things. That's how, you see, slowly and slowly, Brahma Baba had faith in me and my intelligence and all those things, and use of intelligence in godly services. And then what happened? Then I came to Abu for the first time. And again, I had to use my intelligence, uh, <laughs> conflict of intelligence with Brahma Baba. When I came for the first time in Pandavavan, 
Baba, you know, where, where there is that tower of silence, uh, there, you see, there was formerly a lawn tennis ground. And Baba used to play cricket with all the children, you see. So the moment I entered Pandobhon from the backside, I first met Dadi Santri. And she told me, Ramesh, look, Rama Baba is not listening to us and he's playing cricket and do his, he's doing bowling and tirelessly his sugar level will go up and the children do not understand this problem of Brahma Baba's health and all those things. What to do? Again, this was a challenge to my intelligence. I said, Dadi, because in those days we used to say sisters as sisters only. I said, sister, don't worry. I will go to Brahma, Baba, and see that I start bawling and Baba takes rest. He said, no, 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 so many people have tried, but Baba is not listening to anybody. And then I told Dadi, Santri Dadi, that don't worry, I have my intelligence, I will use my intelligence and see that I get ball from Baba and Baba takes rest. He said, how will you do? Baba will not listen to you also. I said, give me chance. I will try my level best. So I went to Baba on, in that, on that cricket ground or so, lawn tennis ground. I told Baba, give me ball. Baba said, nothing doing. I will not give to you. So I said, Baba, you must play game as per the laws of the cricket. So Baba said, what are the laws of cricket? I don't know. I said, then Baba, because you don't know, you, you have to observe laws of cricket. So he said, what are the laws of cricket? I said, as per the cricket laws, a bowler has to ball only six times. And then there should be a change in bowler. That means change in bowling. Somebody else must come and they start doing bowling. Like that, you see, at the end of every six balls, there should be change in bowler. And you have been bowling it for last more than half an hour. You have broken all the rules of cricket. <laughs> so you must play as per the uh, rules of the game. So he said, then what should I do? I said, you should wait as a, in the ground, on the ground, you see, as a fielder and prevent uh, the other person to uh, taking runs also. That is your duty, or if the ball comes, you catch the ball. And then he gave me ball and then I, he asked me, where should I stand? I said, you stand here. And then I had my first ball. And that there was one brother, he hit the ball and the ball went straight to Brahma Baba and Brahma Baba caught that ball and so that batsman was declared out. Those of you who know cricket, they know, you see. So it, it was my first, my first ball, uh, first ball, that batsman was out, caught by Brahma Baba and bowled by Ramesh. In the field of cricket, you see, this is a great achievement. If you uh, do this bowling and you get wicket on your very first ball, that is written in the Guinness record also. For example, those of you who know cricket, Sony Ramadin of West Indies came to India and he took the wicket uh, at the, uh, while with this first ball on the, uh, by bowling in Bombay and it became part of the history uh, next day. It came in the newspapers also that Sony Ramadin took first wicket on his first ball on the soil of, soil of India. So like that, you see, I had my first experience with Brahma Baba. So always this tug of war of intelligence. I used to ask Brahma Baba that we must get our institution registered. If not the main institution, then at least some other institution. <laughs> because we human beings are not immortals, but the institutions are immortals. And therefore, in order to have perpetuity of our institution, we should have a separate institution to take care of properties. 
Because unless and until we have properties, the institution cannot progress further. Baba <laughs> said, nothing doing, nothing doing, nothing doing. It is my principle that the godly, this Pando government will not be registered before the Kauro government. That was Baba's stand. And I always used to explain to Baba that we will not register this main Brahma Kumari's body, but we have a via media, a separate institution to take care of properties only. So your principle that the Pandava government will not be registered with Kaurava government will be also will also survive, and the use and utility of a separate institution for buying of properties and use of properties will be will be served and right from 61 when i became baba's child right from 61 that struggle about uh, registration of a separate institution was there going on discussion with brahma baba i always used to write and i baba used to refuse and i always said, thought you know okay Time has not come. Time has not come. But let me do this hammering work. You know, there are two words in English dictionary. One is repetition and the second is hammering. If you want to drive a nail also in a wall also, you have to hit the nail uh, 10, 15 times only. Then only the nail will uh, go inside the wall. It is not repetition. You are not <laughs> repeating your hammer on the head of that nail, but you are hammering it. So that you see, then the foundation of that nail inside the wall will become solid. So I had right from the beginning understanding that repetition is different and hammering is different. Why not write to Baba and let Baba refuse? A day will come when Baba will accept. And then this happened in November 68. Baba wrote to me in Bombay, the child you are always insisting that we should register a separate institution to buy properties. Now there is a need to buy property because Baba wanted to have museum in Mount Abu. And so Baba wanted to buy property in Mount Abu. So he wrote to me that you come to Abu, with Dadi Prakash Mani. Dadi Prakash Mani was our center in charge at that time in Bombay, Gamdevi Center. So both of us came to Abu and then Baba said that, okay, child, I agree to your suggestion that we should have a separate institution, should get it registered separately. And once it is registered separately, then we can buy properties. Baba molded his principle of buying properties and as late as 1968. Till that time, Baba was not in favor of buying properties. So that was the change in Baba's policy of allowing institution to buy properties. That was in 68, November. And it was decided that we should have a separate institution Baba said, okay, registered it in Bombay. I was made the managing trustee and the settler of the trust. And we got it registered. And Brahma Baba immediately started using that trust. He immediately wrote to me, as soon as you get it registered, come to Abu. There is a property available for buying, uh, for uh, our spiritual museum in Mount Apu. So the trust was registered on 16th of January, 69. Mind you, Baba became Abhyakta on 18th of January. This happened on 16th of January. So Baba wrote to me, and so I went to Ahmedabad on 16th night. On 17th morning, I was in Ahmedabad. I met that owner of the property. You know, our museum is there near Naki Lake. So that property was formerly known as Bundi Cottage. 
So we decided to buy that property and by the by evening 90% of the deal was okay. So I telephoned from Ahmedabad on 17th evening from Ahmedabad that Baba, I have decided this property, we to buy this property, 80% or 90% of the work is over. By tomorrow evening it, it will be, deal will be final. But he says he will come to Abu and get the property registered after 10 days, after, after 5 days. So what should I do for next five days? So Baba on telephone tells me that, what, what is your choice? I said, Baba, I can come to Abu or exhibition is going on in Baroda. I can go there and do Godly service and come to Abu after five days. So Baba said, yes, 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 you go to Baroda. There is no godly service here in Abu. You go there. And at that time, Dadi Prakash Muni was in Pandavan. She took for telephone from Baba. And Dadi, Vidam Dadi had to counteract the direction of Brahma Baba. So Dadi, in strong words, said, Ramesh, if you have got intelligence, do not believe in Baba's direction. You come to Abu immediately, tomorrow night. I said, okay, I will leave for, from Ahmedabad tomorrow night, and on 19th morning I will be in Abu. She said, okay. And then Baba snatched, so to say, telephone from Dadi Prakash Mani's hands and said, why you are telling Ramesh? to come to Abu. You should not tell him to come to Abu. I was listening to all this talk between Baba and Dadi Prakash Muni. But then Dadi had firm knowledge that I am coming. And you know what happened on 18th of January at about 8.15 or so. And the very first thing that Dadi did was to telephone me in Ahmedabad. That Ramesh, where are you? So by that time I had already left for the train, for the railway station. So Dadi came to know that, yes, I am here next day morning. And I was the first person to reach Abu on 19th of January. And then we saw for the first time um, Baba in that position. You see Baba having left that body. Dadi Prakash Muni took me to Baba's room and we paid tribute to Baba. I remember Baba for five minutes. And then in front of Baba's body only I told Dadi that Dadi, it's a great thing that you have taken care of Baba whole throughout the night yesterday. But now this is the work of brothers, of how to do this cremation work and all those things. Uh, and so Dadi asked me, do you know how the cremation takes place? I said, yes, that is what I am doing. I had my cremation of my father, my so many relatives and all those things. I have done cremation of not less, not less than two to three thousand people, two to two hundred people, two dozen, two or three dozen of persons and all those things. So I can arrange it, everything nicely. And Daddy said, okay, do it. And then that was the use of my intelligence. Uh, for the cremation work of Brahma Baba's body. Very first thing that I decided that we have to preserve Baba's body. We called doctor, doctor, there was one doctor here, Thadani. He was Baba's physician here, doctor here. So I asked him, can we preserve body for the next three days? He said, yes, you can do it, but you must keep it in a box and place ice cubes 
uh, all around, around the body, and then you can preserve for three days easily. So we started collecting ice. It was not easily available in Mount Abu. Is, uh, earliest was, uh, nearest was Palanpur, about 60, 70 kilometers, uh, miles from, from Abu. We got it, we had a box, and then Baba's body was placed, we placed body in that history hall with ice and all those things. And then slowly and slowly brothers and sisters from around the, uh, around the divine family, around India, we started coming. And then you know that we had the cremation on 21st. At every stage, you had to use your intelligence. Radha Chandra asked, came to me that there should be a platform on which the body should be rested. What should be the size of the platform? I just remembered Baba and what should be the size? And I said, okay, make it six foot by ten feet. He said, okay, it's a nice size. Then he asked me, what should be the height of that platform? I said, two and a half feet. He said, okay. Then the question came, where exactly cremation should take place? Then we sent Dada, I sent Brother Jagdish to Sirohi, our district headquarters, to take permission from the government to have this cremation in the Pandobhavan complex itself. And the collector of this district gave, me, gave us permission to have cremation inside the Pandobhavan. That was a unique thing. And then on 21st, you know it, that intelligence, yeah, that means that cremation took place. In between, on 19th of January, Abhyak the Babdada came down into the body of Dadi Santri. That was the last visit of, Brahma, of this Abhyak the Babdada in the body of Santri Dadi. And it was a really unique scene. Till, till 18th of January, Brahma Baba's body was the chariot for Shiva Baba. And on 19th of January, that body is flat on the surface, in a box, covered with ice and all those things. And Baba coming down into the body of separate sister. It was a really unique scene. For the first time, I could see that thing, that difference. And Baba gave Murli for one or more than one hour. And then he said that I will, after cremation, he will come down and give all the answers to all your questions because I understand you people have got lots of questions and I will reply all your questions. And then on 20th, another test came of use of intelligence. Another test. Dadi Santri came to me and said that Baba has promised yesterday, that means on 19th, that he will come after the cremation and give Murli and give all directions. So she said that she was our official messenger sister from the inception till 19th of January 69. She was the official messenger sister. So she said that I feel that I should not be sitting there and Baba coming down in my body. Let it, let Baba come down into the body of Dadi Guldar. And now let Dadi Guldar be the official messenger sister. I said, to me it does not make any difference. We went to Dadi Prakashmani and Didi Manmohini and others for this change in the status of the messenger sister. Dadi said that, Ramesh, we are very busy, we are totally in that confused stage. You decide whatever you can decide. Don't disturb us. 
So I, we, I and Dadi Santri came back. I said to Dadi Santri that you go to Baba and get it decided who should be your chariot. This is not for me. It is for Sri Baba to decide. So she went into trance in Baba's room and look and look how taste, how much taste Baba conducts. Baba replied that he this is not my question. This is the question for you children to decide. I want chariot. You decide who should be my chariot. Into whose body I should come. You decide whether in Santri Dadi or in Gulzar. That Baba will not decide. Really, it was a big question, a very big question about the future of the institution and future messenger sister for the institution. And I don't get any help. And Santri Dadi said that, Baba says that, let Ramesh decide. And whatever he decides is acceptable to me. So I said, we went to Dadi Gulzar, that Baba is telling us like this, what should we do? Will you accept this role of messenger sister? She said, she does not mind, you see, and it is up to us to decide. She cannot say that, oh yes, I want to become messenger sister. I cannot reply you. You decide on your own. And so we were back to the square one as to who should become the messenger sister. Ultimately, Santri Daji said, Ramesh, you decide whether I should become or Santri, uh, Dadi Guldar should become. And then I said, okay, let us decide that Dadi Guldar becomes messenger sister. And that was really a great sacrifice by Santri Dadi, that right from 37 till 69 January yeah, 19th, she was the messenger sister and she voluntarily surrendered her position of messenger sister. And decided that Dadi Gulzar becomes messenger sister. It was decided between me, myself, Santri Dadi, and we informed Dadi Gulzar that tomorrow you have to sit on the stage and be the Baba's chariot and go to Baba and Baba will come down in your body. So we three only knew about these things. And then after cremation, what happened that the question came up, come on now, offering bhog to Baba. And everybody started looking at Santri Dadi that she should go and sit on the stage. And then Gulda Dadi got up from her seat and then went to the stage and started sitting on this. And then Dadi Prakashman said, why she is she going? She is not the official messenger sister. I said, Dadi, be calm and be quiet. It is decided that Dadi Gulzar will become today's messenger sister. And Baba has agreed to come into his body and then he will start giving Murli. So Dadi started looking at me like this. Why you are changing this position which has been decided right from 37? I said, this is not my decision. This is the decision of Santri Dadi. She says this. She would not like to become and let Guruja Dadi become. It was a great uh, moment for me to decide and big question of views of intelligence as to how uh, and who should become messenger sister. But fortunately, Santri Dadi and Guruja Dadi, both of them cooperated and then we have that first Abhyakta Murli on 21st of January. And then at the end of the Murli, Baba started distributing Toli. And then when my turn came, Baba, my, when mic was removed, Baba said, bring the mic in front of me. That means in front of Baba. And then he told me, he told me that the moment Baba leaves this body and goes back to the subtle world, you come down and sit on this chair and then inform everybody about the formation of that world in your spiritual trust and change in the policy 
of the institution of registering a separate institution for the purpose of buying property and the change in the policy of buying properties that henceforth we would like to buy properties and for that there is this instrument called World Renewal Spiritual Trust. So everybody is listening to these things that I have to sit on the dais after Baba and tell everybody that formation of the World Renewal Spiritual Trust and that framework of that was already told to the audience by Abhyakta Bab Dada. And so then thereafter, I sat on the uh, dais and, and, the, and then told everybody that we have decided to form this trust. And then we have agreed to buy this Bundi cottage. And that will be the first property of the institution. And this is the first change in the policy, property policy of this institution. Now this is how we have started using uh, Baba's knowledge and our godly intelligence for the godly service. It's a very big challenge, you see, that you see, to be the obedient child of Baba and use, godly, uh, use our intelligence for godly services. Otherwise, there are so many questions, so many times we have that desire to go against the direction, but we have to be the obedient child of Baba and use our intelligence in such a manner that these intelligence becomes not a curse to us, but a blessing for our spiritual progress. And this is what, as I already told you in the beginning, that <laughs> Abhyakta Baba told me that, Ramesh, your progress in this divine family is mainly on account of your obedient use of your divine intellect for godly services. And you have always acted in furtherance of godly service, either under the direction of Baba or under the directions of sisters. So it's a very big challenge. Otherwise, what happens that, you see, up till now, it's a male-dominated society. And in that male, from that change, from that male-dominated society into a female-dominated society, and to be the obedient uh, child of Baba, and to be obedient to Baba and to sisters, it's a big, big, big question to our own arrogance or what we call as our uh, body consciousness. But to surrender our this body consciousness, to surrender our arrogance to Baba and to Dadis and others, and use our intelligence in the best possible manner for the godly services. It's a big, big challenge. And uh, uh, many times I find that many of our brothers fail in this position that they are not in a position to be obedient to Baba. They are not in a position to surrender their intelligence to Baba or to the center in charge or the sister in charge or to our dadis or to the headquarters. But my experience and exper experience is that by becoming obedient and instrument of godly service and useful to sisters, to um, the institution and to Baba, we have a much faster progress. And this is what uh, I would like, wanted to share with you when Sister Mira suggested me today's topic. I said, okay, I will, whatever topic that you give, I am Baba's obedient child. And whatever is the topic you have suggested, I will try my level best to stick to the topic and see that I may be able to make some con useful contribution uh, to our divine family of double foreigners. That's how I am in front of you. I hope you see, I'm in, please excuse me if, you, if anybody has uh, a feeling of my use of my uh, arrogance or my body consciousness, but it is not a, a use of my body consciousness, but just to ex explain to you that how to surrender our intelligence, intelligence to Baba it's a very, very, very big challenge. And those who surrender their intelligence to Baba, intelligence to Baba, they will only progress further. Otherwise, 
there are always questions of our intelligence at variance with the directions of Baba or with Dadis. So, that should not happen. And this is what I always try to observe, that I be the obedient child of Baba, I use my intelligence in the best possible manner for godly services under the canopy of Baba or Dadis. Om Shanti. Sorry, I have taken 10 minutes more than the normal time. Yes, you want to ask some questions. You, you have your mic, otherwise I can't listen to you. There are so... Uh, What was the reason for you or for Daddy Chantry to think of Daddy Gulsa as the chariot? Yes, the main reason was that you see, she was the messenger sister right from beginning till 19th of January. So she knew many, many, many things about the institution and about Baba and all those things. So she felt that if Baba comes down into her body and gives Murli, that many people may think that it is Santri speaking and not Baba. But in case Gulja Dadi speaks, then everybody knows that Gulja Dadi is new on this, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, and he is new, and she does not have the full background of all those things that have happened. And therefore, people will easily accept uh, Murli from Gulja Dadi's mouth as Abhyakta Baba's Murli. In fact, even in the beginning, for years, to, for at least for two to three years, there was a misunderstanding in the mind of us, a few, a few people, that Guldar Dadi, the uh, brother Jagdish is writing Abhyakta Murli. Guldar Dadi is uh, remembering those Abhyakta Murlis written by Jagdish, and then she is speaking from the dais. That was the misunderstanding, even if, uh, in, in spite of this arrangement and Dadi Guldar becoming medium, even then in the beginning for what, two or three years, and this happened right up to 71, that people had misunderstanding about Dadi Guldar also, and that brother Jagdish writing Murli. Only in 71, when we went out, outside India, brother Jagdish, myself, and Shailendra Dadi and Dr. Nirmala Usha and Sister Rosie. We were out and Brother Jagdish was out of India for more than one year. And then that was the realization for others that look, now Jagdish is not here for more than one year. And even then all these Abhyakta Murlis are being uh, spoken by Brahma, Abhyakta Baba, that means by Gulja Dadi uh, as the chariot of Abhyakta Baba. And so, People had 100% faith in Abhyakta Baba uh, only after uh, our visit of UK and other places in 71. Till that time, this misunderstanding was there. And if Santri Dadi had continued, then this mis misunderstanding would have lasted much longer. And second thing, the health-wise also, Gulja Dadi is still available physically also. Whereas Santri Dadi left her body in 83. So that was also another subtle reason also. And then Santri Dadi, her health was not remaining good in Mount Abu. So she went to Calcutta and stayed there in Calcutta. So that because she was suffering from asthma, and here the climate was not, not good for her health. And therefore also, uh, it was a good change for Dadi Santri to go to Calcutta and stay there, so, so she could enjoy better health there in Calcutta. So all these reasons were there, that, but then at that particular moment, on 28th of January, we were not knowing all those things. But this, <laughs> um, we, are, we, we were made instrument of Baba, and as I said, you see, it was the greatest sacrifice of Santri Dadi that she voluntarily offered to resign as the messenger sister and appoint 
Dadi Guldar. I tell you very honestly, if I had been in place of Santri Dadi, I would not have resigned. I said, oh, what is this? Now I have got the golden chance of becoming Baba's chariot. And why should I resign? But look at the greatness of Santri Dadi. She voluntarily resigns in the best interest of the institution. So this institution runs what we call runs on the strength of the sacrifices of people. We are here not for position. We are not here to enjoy our rights, and, but we are here to enjoy our responsibilities and share our responsibilities in this divine family. Okay, anything else? Anybody else? So, I have tried to use, I give you a picture of godly services right from 52 uh, to 69. Sorry, my English is based on my <laughs> Hindi more rather than my pronunciations are based on uh, Indian style of English. It is known as English, not English. Hindi come English. One author has called this type of English as English, H-I, H-I for Hindi and English. According to what qualities, uh, Brahma Baba became number one? According to? What qualities, main, main qualities, Brahma Baba became number one? Well, there are 101 qualities. It will take, to answer your question, it will take at least one hour or more than one hour to reply you. Why Brahma Baba, what, are, what were the inherent qualities of Brahma Baba because of which he became number one? But he surrendered to Baba, yeah. otherwise he was also very intelligent. He was a very, number one businessman, you see, of Calcutta, and he was the president of Diamond Merchants Association and all those things. And to judge the quality of diamond is the, is, is the most difficult question. I, I know people who have wrongly decided about buying of diamonds. American diamonds and then Thailand diamonds and so many varieties of diamonds are available. And out of that, to select the pure diamond is very, very difficult. And Baba had that great capacity of buying right type of diamonds. Not only that, when he separated from his partner in 36, 37, then his partner said that uh, Dada Lekhraj, that, that was Baba's name, is, you take diamonds and I take money because I don't know how to deal with diamonds. You know how to deal with diamonds and I take money. And Baba got diamonds. And then what happened? Prices of diamonds went on increasing and increasing and increasing. And that much diamonds is which Baba got it. Uh, but on separation from his partner, from that business in 70, in 36, that was the source of the income for the institution uh, for the first 16 years. That was the great intelligent decision of Brahma Baba to take diamonds uh, while separation from his partner. And that profit and all those things enabled us or enabled to sustain the institution for the first 16 years, right up to 52. So Baba was also a great intelligent person, great intelligent person. And then he surrendered it fully to Baba. Not only he, but he surrendered along with his relatives to, to Baba. It was a great decision, great question of uh, surrender the ego 
छोटू से तुलसी बाबा बट टू आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन इट रिक्वेस्ट इट इज वन आवर वट आर द ग्रेट क्वालिटीज ऑफ श्री ब्रह्मा बाबा बिकॉज ऑफ बीच ही बिकेम एंड दैट सिस्टर मीरा अरेंज समन द क्लेक्चर ऑफ समन द ब्रदर और सिस्टर हैंड आंसर यू ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन वट आर द ग्रेट क्वालिटीज ऑफ ब्रह्मा बाबा बिकॉज ऑफ बीच ही बिकेम नंबर वन इन द होल ड्रामा ऑफ फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर्स ओके शैली कंप्लीट दिस थिंग ओके ओम शांति वील हैव मेडिटेशन फॉर वन मिनिट